So this video lesson is all about polygons and angles. Now I'm going to warn you uh, from the very beginning, there's a lot of terminology in this video lesson. There are a lot of things for you to pause and write down uh, before you work on your worksheet tonight and before we get to class tomorrow. Uh, there's not going to be a whole lot in here other than some of this terminology that we need to talk about. Um, and so there is going to be a lot of pausing and starting and writing things down. And so before we can talk about classifying polygons, first we have to talk about what polygons are. And some examples of polygons are these things that you see over on the left. The triangle, the square, the star, the arrow, uh, and the hexagon, all of these qualify as polygons. And all of these things that you see on the right are not polygons. So I'm going to ask you to pause the video for a second. You don't need to write anything down. Uh, but I want you to make some observations about the, po the polygons on the left and the non-polygons on the right and see what you can notice and see if you can draw some conclusions about what qualifies as a polygon and what uh, disqualifies a shape from being a polygon. So go ahead, pause the video. Uh, take 15 to 30 seconds to make a few of those observations uh, and unpause when you are ready to move on. So there are a few things to notice about the shapes on the left compared to the ones on the right. Uh, the shapes on the left are all made of lines or line segments, so they're all straight. Whereas the oval and the, uh, and the semicircle have some curved edges to them. And so one of the things that has to be true about a polygon is that all of the edges have to be straight. Another thing that we see for the polygons on the left is that all of the edges meet at a vertex somewhere, so there's not a gap in the polygon like there is for this arrow looking shape on the right. And finally, the last one on the right has this crossing of line segments there where there are none of them over on the left. Uh, and that's something uh, that we call that we don't have any segment intersections except at uh, the vertices. We don't have any of these uh, crossings here so that we create vertical angles. So the three things that are important for being a polygon is one that it has to be closed, which means there are no gaps. It is made of line segments and so not any curved edges. And none of these segments intersect except at endpoints, which means no segments cross to make an X like that. So go ahead, pause the video, and write down this definition of a polygon here. Now, as we can see, if we go back and look at some of those shapes that we had before, uh, there were examples of everything that makes up a polygon on the left and everything that <laughs> makes something not a polygon on the right. Uh, this Gap here is an example of a shape not being closed. A segment cannot be curved. So this uh, semicircle is not uh, made only of line segments. And here's that intersection again where we talked about uh, that we can't have any of those sort of X crossings there. And so the next part of the video is just going to go through the names of different types of polygons. We already talked in the last video lesson about what a triangle is. Uh, if it has four sides, we call it a quadrilateral. So go ahead uh, and pause the video and write down quadrilateral. And we're going to go through a few here uh, where you don't have to pause the video right away. Um, but after a quadrilateral, all of our polygons start to be named in similar kind of ways. So you don't have to pause the video right now, but you'll pause the video in a few. As soon as we get to five, we start calling everything gons. So five sides makes something a pentagon. Six sides makes something a hexagon. Seven sides makes something a heptagon. Eight sides makes something an octagon. Now these are things that you're fairly familiar with when it comes to um, gons, especially uh, pentagon, hexagon, and octagon. So go ahead, pause the video now, and write down these four types of shapes, including the number of sides that they have, uh, and unpause the video when you are ready to move on. Well, once we get beyond octagon, we have a few special names for things, too. A nine-sided shape is called a nonagon. A ten-sided shape is called a decagon. A twelve-sided shape is called a dodecagon. And then we can jump to a 20-sided shape, which is called an icosagon. So go ahead, pause the video now, and write down these four types of shapes, again, based all on the number of sides that they have. And so those are really all the different types of shapes 
that we are going to give specific names to uh, when we're talking about these kinds of things, at least in sixth grade. Uh, and so we can talk about things that have 11 sides, 15 sides, 127 sides, uh, 3 million sides, for example. And while everybody, every type of polygon with a number of sides does have a name, at a certain point, they become really complex, and it's much easier just to call them by the number of sides. So if we had a 17-sided shape, we would just call it a 17-gon. And so that's how we name shapes according to their gons. There is one other thing that we need to know about polygons before we move on, and that's there are some times where every measure every angle measure and every side length is equal for an entire shape. Now that's the case in an equilateral triangle, that's the case in a square, and we don't have any other special names for it beyond that. But what we call them in general, after uh, equilateral triangles and squares, are regular polygons. So go ahead and write regular polygon as well as this description of them. All angle measures are equal and all side lengths are equal. And that is it for terminology in this video lesson. Uh, go ahead, work on the worksheet, uh, and we will continue to go over these as well as some special properties of polygons when you come into class.